zero there. Now, this zero will be added to 27. So you say zero plus 27. The answer, of course, is 27. Then you take the 27 plus 58. So 27 plus 58. The answer there will be 85. Then 85 plus 130. 85 plus 130. When you work out this, you will find 215. Then 215 plus 105. 215 plus 105 you get 320. Again, the same. 320 plus 50. 320 plus 50. This would give you 370. The last, 370 plus 30. 370 plus 30. You get 400. This 400, the last figure, should agree. In the question, we have been told there are 400 children. So if there are 400 children, but here you find the 350, then you have made a mistake in your calculations. So the figures that you are getting, the 0, 27, 85, 215, 320, 370, and 400, these are the cumulative frequency. So the cumulative frequency are the answers that we are getting with the addition. So we have the frequency and the cumulative frequency. So to find the cumulative frequency, we keep on adding 0 plus 27, get 27. 27 plus that, you get this, as for so forth. Now, we have made the cumulative frequency table. The next, we are going now to draw the cumulative frequency curve, which means we are going to plot and draw a curve which will be the height against the cumulative frequency. So, the height will be on the horizontal axis, and the cumulative frequency will be on the vertical axis. Then you are going to plot the numbers, 100, 0, 110, 27, 120, 85, 130, 215, and so forth. Then, we are going to draw a smooth curve through those points that we are going to draw. And the curve that we get is what is called the cumulative frequency curve. From that cumulative frequency curve, we are going to estimate the median and the quartiles. Let us now plot the points that we have got. 100, 0, 100, and 110, 0, and so forth. So, to do that, we use a graph paper. Let us move on to our graph paper and plot this value and then see how the quartiles will come out. This is how a graph paper looks like. I have an improvised graph paper on my board. We have the numbers ranging from 100 to 160. As I said, the height will be on the horizontal axis. The cumulative frequency will be on the vertical axis. So when you are drawing the cumulative frequency, you must label these axes. As I've written here, on the horizontal axis, I've indicated it represents the height in centimeters. On the vertical axis, you can either write cumulative frequency or number of pupils. Remember the question is talking about pupils. So this cumulative frequency is representing the number of pupils. So where I've written a number of pupils, you can as well write cumulative frequency. Those can be used interchangeably. Now look at the, the scale of our graph paper. We are moving from 0 to 100, 100 to 110, 110 to 120, 120 to 130. By comparison, you can see that there is a mismatch from 0 
we are jumping to 100. And then from 100, there is a difference of 10. From 110 to 120, there is another difference of 10. Then 10, 10, 10, 10. So the only difference is at the bottom, at the start, from 0 to 100. These intervals are equal. Now, when you are drawing your graph, at the start here, we want to make a continuous line. You have to show that there is an equal interval. So to do that, you do a zigzag line like this. So that zigzag line is showing that this interval is different from the others. So you are moving from zero, there is that jump to 100. So that interval we have seen is not the same as where we have taken a difference of 10, 10. So at the beginning, you always start zero, then you put that zigzag line from 100, then you proceed. Fine. In every question to do with this, you might be given a scale. So say 2 centimeters representing 10, on the horizontal axis. So on your graph paper, maybe that big box from here to there would be two centimeters. Again, two centimeters. So two centimeters representing 10, to, uh, 10 centimeters. Again, two centimeters representing 10. On the vertical axis, the scale can say two, centi two centimeters representing 50 children. So each two centimeters, 50 children. Again, 50, 100, like that. So you must follow the given scale strictly, the one that will be given in the question. Unless otherwise, every time you are given a question on this, the scale will be given. If it is not given, then you have to set up your own scale by looking at the values that you have. The values that you have on the horizontal scale will tell you how to scale your graph paper. Maybe you can say 2 centimeters representing 100, depending on what you have. Now let us plot our values. Remember we said the cumulative frequency scale is drawn by plotting the, the height against the cumulative frequency. This is 0, 0. Uh, this is 100, 0. Sorry. So 100 is here and 0. I'll put a dot like that. The next one is 110, 27. So 110, where will be 27B? On your graph paper, there are subdivisions between that figure and that line. There are small graph paper, uh, small squares subdividing that interval. So you will be able to count 1, 2, 3, 4, until you reach your 7. Oh, in my graph paper here, I'll only estimate. I know from here to there is 50. So 25 is exactly halfway. So 27, slightly above 25. So we have 110,27. The next point will be 120,85. This is 120. I know this is 50. Halfway, that will be 75. So 85 will be slightly above. So that is 100,85. The next point will be 130,215. Let's go to 130. This is 150, 200. So 215, somewhere there. So we have 130,215. The next point is 140,320. So 140, this is 250, 300, 320. Love it somewhere here. Then we have 50, 370. 150, this is 350, 370. Somewhere there. The last point is 160, 400. We have 400 and then 160. So the last point is over there. This is 160, 400. 
what you do next is now to draw a smooth curve through those points that you are you have plotted it is recommended that you use an hb pencil to draw your curve because an hb pencil is soft enough don't use the h or 2h is too hard you fail to draw a smooth curve so use an hb pencil so using an hb pencil i'll draw a smooth curve through these points it will go like this non stop no bends draw a smooth curve through these points you can see the way it looks smooth with no bends all cumulative frequency curves look the same it's like the letter s stretched so it will be it will take that shape after drawing this cumulative frequency curve the next now is to estimate the median and the quartiles we'll start with the median the median q2 as i said will be an estimate we shall estimate it from the graph the median by definition is the central value so the median is equal to the half of the total number of children half of the total number of children now check how we shall find the median. The total number of children is 400. So you find half multiplied by 400. And that will give us 200. Now 200 is not the median. We are going to the graph and follow this 200 and get the median. So now we'll say the median Q2 will be equal to let us follow the graph that 200 will help us find the median half of 400 is 200 look at the highest value there is 400 so the 200 we have calculated is this figure 200 now following this 200 I will use a pencil Again, an HB pencil and a ruler. Follow it with a dotted line horizontally, following that line for 200 until you reach the curve. I hope you are able to see my dotted line. 200, that figure we calculated. So, this is where we are going to get the media. You follow that line with the dotted line until you reach the curve. When you reach the curve, again, now move vertically down. You move vertically down again with a, a dotted line. Fine. We followed 200, moved with a dotted line, reach the curve then moved down. The number that you get on the horizontal axis, that figure there where the line has reached the horizontal axis, that will be the median. By my graph, I will say the median will be 129. So the median Q2 will be equal to 129. Have you seen the steps? To find the median, you find half of the total number you have on the vertical axis. Half of that will give you 200. Then you follow this 200. Move with a dotted line horizontally until you reach the curve. From the curve, again move downwards. And read off the answer you, you get on the horizontal axis. This is where Q2 will be. That is Q2. The lower quarter 
Remember we said the quartiles divide the measures into four equal parts. To find the lower quartile, you find one quarter of the total number of children. You'll find one quarter of the total number of children. What is one quarter of 400? This will be 100. Again, just as we said, the, medi the 200 was not the median. Also, the 100 is not the lower quarter. So now we are going to say Q1, which is the lower quarter, will be equal to. We are going to follow the 100 on the vertical axis. So on the vertical axis, the same method, take a ruler and an HB pencil, move horizontally with a dotted line. Following that line for 100, you have reached the curve. And then after you reach the curve, again we move vertically down. The number that you read of on the horizontal axis, that will be the lower quarter. The lower quarter here by my graph is 121. So the lower quarter, Q1, will be 100 and Okay. Now, here I am estimating, but on your graph, the ones you use in your exams, the intervals from 120 to 130 are subdivided by small squares. So you are able to be able to count, and that number should be exact. 121, if you did it on the standard graph paper. How about the upper quarter? The upper quartile will be three quarters again of the total number. Now, three quarters of 400, this will give us 300. 